Our first story introduces us a man who started his creative works at the age of five while he was drawing and painting. That was 85 years ago. Cy Lewin's story reads a little like Hollywood fiction, but it's all true. People around the globe adore his work. And soon, you'll be able to see it in a museum in Bethlehem thanks to the International Institute of Restorative Practices. Tempo's Grover Socox tells us all about him. Cy Lewin uses charcoal to free the ghosts that haunt him. Because I see them, I see them, and so I, I, I bring them, I bring them back. At 90 years old, Cy Lewin can't bury all the shocks that flesh is heir to, and so he puts them on canvas. I'm a visual artist because I see things, and it's not necessarily uh, the way uh, realists would see it. Cy draws from experience. His family moved to Germany from Poland to escape the bias against Jews in the 1920s. But by the early 30s, they watched with alarm as Adolf Hitler rose to power. January 30, 1933, he was, he was named Chancellor. Came to power and heard the news uh, on the radio and I turned to my parents and said, I'm, I'm not staying here. Cy captured Germany's descent from freedom to fascism in his series, The Parade. I remember the parades that already in Germany, even before uh, Hitler came in, you know, they loved parades, they loved parades. And children especially loved parades. And so I figured, well, I mean, one parade leads to the other parade, which finally leads to the parade, which leads to the death marches of, of, of war. By a miracle, Cy and his family escaped to America as the Holocaust began. All family, everybody. It was great, it was great, I'm in America, I'm in America, you know. As a teenager living in New York, Cy savored the city's art museums and galleries. He hoped one day to display his work in such places. Unfortunately, these dreams were interrupted when a policeman beat him and took his money in Central Park. For me, he's still alive, you know, I can't get it out of my, out of my system. Cy lost more than his money that day, he lost his will to live. But then he met Rennie, and she saved him from despair. Rennie said she took one look at me and she fell in love. I took one look at Rennie and I had a strange premonition that I'm being introduced to my future wife. They married in 1942, shortly after Cy enlisted in the U.S. Army. He joined the famed Ritchie Boys, a unit comprised mostly of German refugees who trained at Camp Ritchie in Maryland. And they were all intellectuals, but they were, yeah, I mean, they were absolutely ferocious and uh, and uh, to, to, to its soldiers, to the German soldiers. The Ritchie boys interrogated German POWs and performed other psychological operations, from D-Day to the occupation of Germany. Sy's job entailed going to the front lines with a loudspeaker to coax the Germans into surrendering. We started out with a, with a, with a, with a jeep, you know, put us in jeep, and that didn't last long. I uh, was shot out from under us, so then finally they put us in an armored car. Like his comrades, I saw the horrors of war close up. He recalls the day they liberated the Buchenwald concentration camp. And I went to the crematorium, yeah, yeah, which was still, the ashes were still in there, but otherwise. And I just, I just broke up. War left Sy numb. But I didn't want anything to do with the war, and so I did landscapes, Colorful, beautiful landscapes, still lives, nudes, oh, nudes, lovely nudes, you know. And they became very successful. But the somber images of war kept intruding. So he began exploring the dark side, and that led to the parade and the journey, a visual tour through the nightmare of a concentration camp. And yet, he also produced works that celebrated life's joy and wonder. Got to come up to, to light, I got to come up to color, you know. And so I have the Shawangan series, for instance. It is the, uh, the series that I've been working on, uh, the Cosmic Game series. His paintings and charcoals represent works in progress because he's always changing them. These two pieces used to be one painting from the Millipede series, which are cut in half. In 2006, Sai bequeathed his works to the International Institute for Restorative Practices. The IIRP strives to change the behavior of students at risk and youth caught up in the criminal justice system by restoring their sense of community. 
So I saw a progression from, uh, uh, in his art from dealing with the darkness, getting into the light, and, and uh, using that process to heal himself is very akin to what we do with kids. And just like Ted Wachtell and his colleagues at the I IRP, Sai sees endless possibilities for light, even in the darkness. We are made of many things, including stardust. And it's that twinkle in his eye, that stardust perhaps, that makes Sai Lewin himself a work in progress. For Tempo, I'm Grover Silcox reporting.